Well, welcome back to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I've got yet another recipe to share with you, only this time it is not a seafood themed dish as it usually is on my channel because we have one reason. It's my daughter's 12th birthday. And when I asked her, I said, babe, what do you want for dinner? You know, she said, dad, please make me that special steak dinner that you made for me the other day. And I said, you know what? It's your day today. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna cook it up. She's been my fishing buddy since she was just a little baby. You know, you've probably seen her on a lot of the Delta videos, but now she's all grown up and she's fishing with me out in the San Francisco Bay and she's been able to get out to the ocean. Guys, today's her day. I'm gonna go ahead and make this recipe. Again, I'm gonna catalog this among all of my other recipes, but today I'm making a steak dinner to share with you. I hope that you like it. I hope that you enjoy it. Stay tuned, I've got something special to share with you. Here's what we have going on. Tonight, we're gonna make some pan-seared steak with gargonzola, fired or roasted, and I'm gonna show you the blowtorch that I use for that, and we're gonna pair that with a portobello garlic mashed potato. We'll have some shiitake mushrooms on the side. Then over here, I've got some uh, Brussels sprouts, and we're gonna do that with some balsamic vinegar. It's gonna be wonderful. I know it seems like a lot of ingredients, but I'll go through all of the ingredients with you. I'll share that with you step by step. It's really easy to do, guys. I can't wait to share it with you. Stay tuned. So today, because we're making that steak, I've got a chuck eye steak. Do not discount the chuck eye, guys. It's a really good cut of meat, okay? So we're gonna use a chuck eye steak tonight. We got rosemary thyme. We got two things of garlic. One's gonna be for the garlic mash. The other one's gonna be for the steak. Then we have some gardens over the cheese because I love that. Remember, we're gonna fire this up. We're gonna roast it with the blowtorch. I love the blowtorch, guys. You have to see it. Then we got shiitake mushrooms. We have the onions. We have the potatoes. Then we have some portobello mushrooms. We have some Brussels sprouts. And then we're gonna need some olive oil. We're gonna have to use that white truffle like I used in my last video, but boy, does that make mashed potatoes taste wonderful. We're gonna need some balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, honey, and then I'm gonna take all of these things, I'm gonna chop things up offline so that we can cut some time off of this, and then I want you to stay tuned. All right, so here's what we got going on. My little girl's doing all of the chopping. She's my little helper tonight. She's already halved the Brussels sprouts for us. Then she's got half the shiitake mushrooms. She's chopped up the portobello mushrooms. That is gonna go inside the uh, mashed potatoes. I promise you, this is a super delicious mashed potato. It's gonna be nutty and delicious. Pair that with the white truffles. Man, oh man, you guys have to try this. So we've already got the chopped up potatoes. We're gonna throw that in the boiling hot water. Simple, everybody knows how to boil potatoes. I hope so at least. Let's go ahead and put this in the hot water. I can't do this one-handed, I don't think, but I'm gonna try. Oh, oh, look at that. There we go, in. All right, so what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm gonna wrap the steak up. I'm gonna use traditional uh, roasting twine. So we're gonna cut this off, and I only have 60 seconds to try to get this done. So all we're gonna do is we wanna form this steak so that it cooks uniformly. You're just gonna wrap it around the steak. We're gonna tie it really well. Any tie that you like or know, just a traditional knot would work just fine. And then all we're doing is we're gonna go ahead and wrap this nice and tight. That way everything cooks up evenly. That's it. And then uh, any tie would work just fine. And that's all that we're doing, guys. We want everything to cook nice and even, okay? So that's what we're doing. I've already got one done. I just showed you the last one. So here's what we're doing for the garlic mashed potatoes. We're gonna prepare the garlic. So we'll use some olive oil. I already got a hot pan. We'll throw in about a teaspoon, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and add the garlic at this point. Fill that up. We're just going to cook the raw flavor out of the garlic. Okay. Then we'll throw in the butter. We're going to turn off the heat. 
That's it, guys. This is going to be the garlic butter that we need. That's the garlic butter that we're going to need for the mashed potatoes. We'll set it aside. All right, so here's the step for the garlic mashed potatoes with portobello. So we're going to need some olive oil. We're going to throw this in the pan, about two tablespoons, probably a little bit more because the portobello is going to soak it up. Let's, let's call that two tablespoons. Right. We want this to do a little bit of smoke. And then we're going to go ahead and add portobello mushrooms at this time. Let that cook off, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that garlic and butter, and then right around when this is smoked up, I'm going to add it, and that's it. We'll set it aside. We'll set it aside. All right, so I just wanted to clarify: the portobello mushrooms were cooked in two tablespoons of uh, olive oil. We let that uh, stir fry up a little bit to cook off. Then we added our garlic butter that we already prepared then we just poured it in and here's what it looks like okay it's bubbling up nicely I just turned off the fire we'll let that do its thing for the next minute or two we'll leave that and set it aside and then when we're ready we're gonna add that to our mashed potatoes so we're gonna put the mashed potatoes in a bowl in a mixing bowl right there and then we're just gonna take our masher and we're gonna mash Okay, we'll do that until we're happy with the texture, and then we'll come back and add all of the rest of the ingredients. We'll be right back. So we're gonna go ahead and take the portobello mushrooms, the garlic, the butter. We're gonna go ahead and toss it in to our mashed potatoes. And we're gonna go ahead and mix it thoroughly, let that incorporate. And then I'm gonna come back and hit it with some um, salt, pepper, and then we're going to put some heavy cream in there, and that is it. All right, we're going to go ahead and stir in about a, let's call that a half cup, or a little over a quarter cup. All right, then we're going to go ahead and add some salt, because now would be the time to add the salt. Let's just call that about a teaspoon. And we're definitely going to need some pepper. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the white truffles at this time. About a tablespoon, and that is all there is to it, guys. My little girl's gonna stir that up. We're gonna make that work, and then we'll set that aside and start working on all of the other stuff. Keep going, you're doing great. Good job. We're gonna work on our Brussels sprouts. So I've already added the olive oil, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the salt and pepper. My little girl's gonna help me with it. Take a look. All right, so we're gonna get about, let's call that, go ahead and keep adding more, sweetheart. Shake, 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 there you go. There you go, we wanna coat it nicely. Perfect. Let's go ahead and add the pepper. Going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, let's call that about a tablespoon. Go ahead and mix it up. You got 20 seconds, sweetheart. Mix, mix, mix. Mix. And all right, so now we're going to go ahead and pour all of that Brussels sprouts onto a, uh, a sheet. We're going to spread them out a little bit so that they're facing up so that they can cook evenly. And then we're going to put that in the oven at 425 for 25 minutes. And that'll be the time that we can start working on our steak and everything will come out nice and beautiful. We're going to go work on the actual steak. So sit tight, stand by. All right, we're going to throw that in the oven, 425. 25 minutes, let that cook off 25 minutes. Let's work on the steak. All right, so we have the Brussels sprouts in the oven. They're cooking at 425 for 25 minutes. That gives me enough time to prepare 
the steak. We're gonna go ahead and cook that off in some thyme, rosemary, butter, garlic. We're gonna make that work. And by the time we're done with the steak and we'll let it rest, we can take out those Brussels sprouts and I'm gonna show you what we do with those Brussels sprouts. But let's work on the steak. So we're gonna go ahead and season the steak up nice and generous. Most of this will come off anyway, so remember you want a nice flavorful steak, so be generous. All right, go ahead and pat it down if you need to. Okay, that's one side. And if you notice, I've wrapped these steaks up, that way they stay shaped and they cook evenly. That's the most important part. If you didn't wrap it like this, then the steaks could cook on one end, well done, and they'll cook on the other end, uneven. So if you wrap it up, you get a nice uniform cooking. And that is the secret to a beautifully cooked steak. Okay, you take that extra step and you add a little bit of love. I promise you, you will appreciate your hard work at the end of the day. Put some extra love in your food. For the sake of time, I always preheat the pan. We're going to add two tablespoons of that olive oil. We do want that to smoke. We want it really, really high heat, guys. We want to sear this steak off beautifully. So we'll let that smoke up just a bit. Now I've already pre-seasoned the steak. You never want to pre-season the steak too early. You usually season it off just as you're ready to put it in. That way the uh, salt doesn't draw out the moisture. What we want is a nice dry steak so that way we can create a nice beautiful crust. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and add the steak. And we'll let that cook off for about four to five minutes to get that nice crust. I'll be right back. So it's been about four minutes, but what I want to do is I want to pick these up and show you what they look like and where we're at so far. That needs to cook another couple minutes. We want that side to sear up really nice. That way it locks in the moisture before we flip it. And then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. We'll add the garlic, the thyme, rosemary, and then we're going to give it a butter bath. So we're going to treat this steak really, really well. But we want that first side to sear up nicely. So five, maybe six minutes, depending on how, heat, how high the heat is. So. All right, so we're back. It has been exactly six and a half minutes. So we'll go ahead and flip this over. There we go, we got that nice crust built up already. Flip it over. Take a look at that color. We give that a couple 30 seconds or so. Then at this time, we're gonna go ahead and add our thyme and rosemary. We're going to add our garlic. And we just want that to cook up a bit. We add the butter shortly after we let these herbs infuse a little bit. And we'll be right back. All right, we let that cook off for about three minutes. Just making sure the garlic is browning up beautifully and all the herbs are starting to cook off. Then we're gonna go ahead and add our butter. We're gonna let the butter go to work. Okay, we'll let that render down just a little bit. It's probably gonna take about a minute for that butter to melt off. And right around that same time, all of those garlics gonna cook up. And we'll be right back. All right, so now that that butter is bubbling up, we wanna go ahead and give this a butter bath. We 
We want our steak to be medium rare. If you guys want uh, a longer cooking time, then obviously cook it longer. But I like medium rare. Do that for about a minute. Okay, now I'm just going to move the tripod over here to show you what's going on. Oops, excuse me. Now we're going to take the steak off and let that rest. Okay. Because we want it medium rare, the rest of the cooking time is going to be in the resting period. So. That's what we got going on. All right, and right around this same time, what I like to do is turn the fire off, get all of that garlic, butter, and herbs. All right, we'll just throw it on top of our steak. Get the rest of that butter, and we'll get a timer is good for the uh, Brussels sprouts. So we'll leave just a little bit of oil in there because we're going to fry up the mushrooms. We'll be right back. All right, that timer's gone off in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and take out the Brussels sprouts. Look how beautiful that looks, guys. Check this out, they are cooked beautifully. We want them to be just like that because we're gonna stir them in in the next part of this, which is balsamic vinegar, honey. Man, stand by. This is gonna be yummy. I can't wait to show you this part. All right, so we've left just a little bit of butter in there from the steak. I'm just gonna add a sprinkle of maybe a teaspoon at most of olive oil, just so the butter doesn't burn. We're gonna help it out a bit. And then here are our shiitake mushrooms. We'll throw that in there. We're just gonna give that a nice stir. Let it smoke up in that super high heat. You want these mushrooms to smoke. Not overcooked, but you want them to smoke. Okay. And halfway through the cooking, we'll throw in the uh, onions, which I'm going to show you on the next segment. But let's finish this up. Mushrooms are cooking up beautifully. What I might want to do is just take a maybe a spoon or a couple spoons of that extra butter. Because I see the mushrooms drying out. There you go. Now it's starting to look nice and shiny. That way the mushrooms don't dry out. That's you don't want the mushrooms to dry out. Now at this stage where the mushrooms are practically ready, we'll throw in about that uh, quarter cup of sliced thin onions to supplement that. So we'll throw that in there now. Let that smoke up. How, see how it's smoking? You want the heat to be exactly like this, smoking hot. You can turn it off and that's it. You want all that moisture to be drawn out. And that's it. 
Now we're ready to start plating, guys. Actually, let's go ahead and throw in a few sprigs of rosemary and thyme into this. Give it some extra, extra good flavor. And we'll let that sit off on the side as we get ready to prepare our Brussels sprouts. Man, that looks yummy, guys. All right, so this is what we're doing with the Brussels sprouts. We're gonna take them off the tray, throw them into a, a, a nice deep dish. In this case, it's just a nice Asian soup bowl. You can put that into a stainless steel bowl, whatever you want. All right, see how they're nice and cooked off. Then you're gonna add about a tablespoon and a half all right, of honey. Then you're gonna add, let's say, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. We'll give that a nice mix. Let all of that balsamic vinegar, honey, salt, pepper infuse just a little bit. So it's gonna be a sweet and tangy, delicious and nutty all at the same time. Man, this is so wonderful. You know, when I'm making these cooking episodes, I always wonder, how am I gonna do this? One-handed or on a tripod, and I'm trying to get the best angles to show you guys, but I do the best that I can, so I hope that you guys are following. This is what we've done with the Brussels sprouts. As I said, we've added the balsamic vinegar, we've added the black pepper, sea salt, just a little bit more, and then of course that honey. Then we give it up a good stir. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat I'm gonna grab one of these. As a chef, you always gotta give it a good taste test. Mmm, it's sweet, salty. Mmm, that's good. All right, so my little girl wants to plate her own birthday dinner, so let's go. Okay, so we're gonna put a glob, a couple globs. There you go. Ooh, hang on. Let's go ahead and get your steak. Set it right on top. Okay, just right on top beautifully. All right, now you're gonna need uh, some of these mushrooms, so grab those mushrooms. Yep, grab some mushrooms. Set it on top, or maybe even on the side because we're gonna put that gargonzola, or gargonzola. I keep saying it all fancy. Go. Beautiful. Okay. Then you're gonna need some of these Brussels sprouts. I don't think we're gonna finish this in 60 seconds, I can tell you that. Alright, we're done. Alright, then I'm gonna use my hands, clean hands, to stack up some of this gargonzola cheese. Okay, and literally, you have a few seconds to turn it on. How do you do this? Turn it on, twist it all the way, all the way. This way? It goes in one direction, sweetheart. There you go. No, keep going, keep going. There we go. Turn it on, press the button, press the button, and fire it up. Let that smoke up even bit. That smells wonderful. And you guys have no idea. This smells so good. All right, that's good. good. Turn it off. Turn it off. Good job. All right, so I only have a few seconds to do this. So I'm gonna take a big old glob of mashed potatoes, just like this, truffled mashed potatoes. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our steak. Okay. Grab our steak and throw that on top. A few pieces of this garlic. And guys, I may need to do this in two parts. Okay. Go ahead and add those mushrooms to the side. Our 
Brussels sprouts. Take on our garbanzoli cheese. Put that on top. And a beautifully cooked, medium rare. Now comes the next step. Stay tuned. All right, here's the part that I want to show you guys: the flow torch. Let's go. We just want to torch up this. You want to do that evenly. Melt that gargans on the cheese. All right, so as I look at this dish, I feel like it needs to be brightened up just a little bit. Now, I've got just a thing to do that. I've got some leftover greens, specifically meat greens, not the microgreens. So check this out. So we got some micro cilantro. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Take some of this. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw that on top. Of the steak, give it some nice color. Yeah, I think that works. We're gonna take the last of that butter. We'll throw that on top of our microgreens just to give it that extra buttery flavor on top of that. So here we go, guys. We got a seared off steak with gargonzola cheese fired off with the blowtorch. We got the micro greens on there, but this is cilantro greens. We're sitting this on a bed of mashed potatoes and portobello mushrooms and truffles. We also have our shiitake mushrooms with onions. And then we have our Brussels sprouts with balsamic vinegar and honey. Guys, this dish is to die for. I'm telling you all of these things, they pair very beautifully. This is a very well done dish and it's a medium rare, just how we like it. My little girl loves it. I'm telling you, you gotta give this recipe a try. I'm gonna put that down in the description. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna go and eat now. All right, so now I'm gonna tear into the steak. Let's go ahead and cut into this. Here we go, guys, medium rare. Oh my gosh. We got medium rare, beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, go ahead and do this again. Cut out a nice piece. This is a nice medium rare. Look at the temperature on this, guys. I'm gonna add the gargonzola cheese or the gargonzola cheese. Then fire it off with the blowtorch. Let me get a good piece. There we go. Add a little bit of microgreens. All right, oh, it keeps falling off. Here we go. Mm. That was so heaven. So heaven. Then we're gonna go ahead and take some mashed potatoes. That's out of this world, guys. You have to give this a shot. My goodness. We're gonna open up this cake. She picked it out herself. Shout out to Pegasus Bakery. You struggling a bit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, you just need to put your two on there, sweetheart. Oh, we're gonna add that heart candle. Let's go. He's struggling with the candle. Come on. I'm just feeling the cake on my head. There we go. One, two. Oh my gosh. You are so old now. Wow. Oh, I'm going to move that strawberry. You ate the strawberry. I had to move it. All right. Let's light up the candle. There's your one. There's your two. And I don't know how we're going to light that up. Supposed to light up like that. Now keep it on one side. There you go. Oh yeah. Alright. Well, happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Birthday, dear my Alana. Happy birthday to you. Man, she got a whole bunch of presents <laughs> that we didn't get to open up on camera, but that's okay. She got her favorite headphones. What is it, the Skull Candy? Yeah. Yeah. And we got a couple more things coming from Amazon. It's a small birthday, but you know what? I love you. I love you too. And uh, let's make a wish. <laughs> yeah, six seconds. <laughs> right, let's go. Let's take that off. Here, I'll help you. I'll take that. There we go. Here, give it to me. All right, you work on giving us a piece. We can toss that in the trash. Let's go ahead and give it a cut. Give it a cut. Man. There's fruit in the middle. I don't know. 